Hi, welcome to the English Language Institute of Singapore's podcast, also known as the Ellis Podcast. Here, we discuss current topics related to the teaching, learning, and assessment of English language with our very own master teachers. I am Victoria, and I am your host. Today, we are exploring inquiry through dialogue, one of the three pedagogical emphases of English Language Syllabus 2020. Here with me is EL Master Teacher, Madame Rita Pillay, who will be discussing with us how to motivate students to write with Inquiry Through Dialogue. Hello, Rita. Hi, Victoria. Can you share a little bit about yourself to our listeners? I'm my second year at Ellis. Prior to this, I've been teaching at a primary school close to 30 years. I've taught English to a whole range of classes across the primary levels. I've definitely found joy in writing from your classes. To our listeners out there, Madam Rita was actually my primary school teacher whom I was so happy to bump into and realize we're working together at Ellis. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I still call her Madam Rita. Today we're talking about inquiry through dialogue and you're talking about how to motivate our students to write. So uh, can you tell me more about what inquiry through dialogue looks like when you're motivating students to write in the classroom? I remember beginning the writing process with a whole stack of worksheets in my hand. There were tons of good phrases to use and additional resources, maybe uh, model compositions. And what I would do then would be just a quick brainstorming. And on occasions, they might write in groups, then they might do their own writing. Students don't like revision. They make the same mistakes over and over again. And I think for students then and maybe even now, all they want is just to get rid of the piece. The sooner it gets out of their hands to the hands of the teacher, for them, the chore is done. And when it came to collaboration, it was always the same students who contribute. That I remember, Victoria, you probably would have been my same student who was, yes, hands raising in the air. At all levels of primary school where I was, I kept seeing this happen. There were kids who were always answering. And then there were also those who were disengaged. They were either passively disengaged or actively disengaged, which mm. was tougher then. Yeah? yeah. And I think the link between inquiry through dialogue and teaching of writing, I found that one of the ways which I could get my students to be engaged was actually through inquiry through dialogue, where I got them involved in writing. So can you share some strategies that you think are useful for teachers? We can use classroom talk to motivate our students to write. Start your lesson with an inquiry. For instance, you could ask your students, how do the authors you read introduce characters that they're going to speak or engage in dialogue? And then you lead them to find that out. Don't provide them with the answers. Provide them with the books, the resources. Let them find out and notice for themselves. And give them that space to talk about what they've noticed. Uh, teach them to ask questions. Being curious about stuff around them. Allow for students to find their own topics as well. Very often, we're the ones giving the topics. We're the ones carrying the exam questions. Let that go. Our students can write about things that matter to them. Remember, the one who's asking the questions most is doing the learning. And it should be our students who are asking these questions. So how do you develop learners to ask these questions? One of the surest ways which I would do this would be to model it for them, show them what it looks like. And if you want your kids to be inquiring in nature or to be curious, you would have to be someone who is interested in things around. I think the kids will pick up on that as well. Usually it's the teachers who are asking all these questions. Show your kids that they can ask questions too. And if you look at questions that they ask, you can actually teach them to ask I wonder questions. And you can teach them to ask questions about themselves. Why am I tall? Why am I this? There's so many questions that they can possibly be asking. You can even ask what if questions. So if I, let's say, had an experience with my young learners on bubble blowing, what if I were a bubble? And that would spur a lot. They would have a lot to write about. I've seen teachers who actually have a wonder box where kids drop in questions. These questions become their topic for writing. Very often we think we have to be just doing the three picture composition for, you know, training <laughs> yes. the kids for the exams. It doesn't take six years to get them there. Yeah. 
it's actually when we motivate them to write and they want to write and they feel that they've got important things to say, I think half the battle is won there. So what other strategies do you use to get students to talk before writing? When we have an idea, sometimes ideas aren't so firm. And by talking through an idea or talking about an idea that we have, it kind of helps us to write. So usually I craft out time where my kids do a quick drawing of stuff that they want to write about. And then they take their drawing to a friend and they talk about their drawing. And it kind of strengthens what they want to write about before they start to the task of writing. Very often you find that kids don't come back to you and say, I don't have anything to write about. I'm stuck. What do I write about? Because they've already talked through what they want to say and it makes it a lot easier for them. So talk as a precursor to writing. To me, that's pretty important. Okay, I also have a writer's notebook where my kids put stuff down. Either they respond to a video or they respond to any stimulus reading that I've done. And this takes about less than 10 minutes. But I find that this 10 minutes where they engage in their own thoughts, they are able to put that thought down into paper. And I give them the time to share this with a peer where they take their notebook and they read it out. Or I even invite them to an author's share. And yes, that kind of helps with motivation to write. You find that uh, they actually jump for the opportunity to read that piece. Because I think all writers need a listener. And when we do that, it kind of makes that alive for them. So all kids have a writer's notebook each? Yes, yes. I think sometimes teachers fear that means a lot more marking. But don't worry, these are little pieces. Sometimes I think we are afraid that we can't mark. So we don't want to give them more work because it just means a lot more for us and we can't cope. One of the things I learned is don't stop your kids from writing just because you can't cope with the marking. It's okay. Let them write uh, and you get them to share with each other. The response that they get to writing doesn't always need to be your pen that's doing the marking. Mm. It could be a peer that's giving them feedback as well. Well, I think I also mentioned having a peer to talk to. When I craft lessons now, I try my best to give that space for that peer interaction where they get to talk with each other. But if you don't structure this talk, then you can't really monitor what they're saying. So for my younger kids, I ensure that I structure the talk. Mm. Yes. How do you do that? For instance, with very young kids, they need starters. And if they if are teaching them how to give feedback on a piece of writing, then I would teach them stuff like, I like this part when you use this word. Give them structures that they can use as handles to start their conversation. And then the conversation becomes a bit more meaningful. Mm. So we're looking at Brophy's three big ideas. Can you link it a little bit more to your experiences that you talked about? Well, for social milieu, I think in creating a classroom climate that nurtures writers, it's got to be a non-threatening environment where kids are not afraid to write about things that matter to them, where they are brave enough to share stories from within and they don't censor themselves even before the words are on the paper. It is an environment where relationships are built, an environment where writers, even young writers, come together believing that they can write. With his second factor expectancy, teachers need to set tasks of appropriate levels that the kids can attain. It should not be too simple, neither should be too difficult, but it should be at what Gotsky refers to as the ZPD, ZPD, Zone of Proximal Development. I think sometimes when we come to class with prior expectations, we say things like, oh, these kids can't write. Or they're only in primary one. What do they know about writing? They can't write yet. Mm. We are not really setting up ourselves for success. Neither mm. are we setting the kids up for success. So coming to class, planning lessons that are suitable attainment level for our kids and knowing what we need to do to move them forward. I think those are important considerations for teachers when they're planning the lessons. And uh, finally, value. I spoke quite a bit about getting kids to write about things that interest them. Mm -hmm. If we give them the opportunity to write about things that matter to them and we let them see what writing looks like 
in the real world where people write to express thoughts, people write to share, people write out frustration. When they get to understand that, they see the value of writing mm -hmm. and that will motivate them to want to emulate writers that they see. Thank you, Rita. We hope this has inspired you to look deeper into your practices and unleash the rich potential of inquiry through dialogue in your classrooms. If you would like to find out more about what we touched on, please look at our show notes, which have links to the resources. I'm Victoria. Good day.